Hello everyone. My name is Craig Easley. I'll be your host today on the uh, the Carrier Ethernet Academy's presentation of the MEF Carrier Ethernet Certified Professional or MEF CECP. This is a tutorial designed to uh, inform you of everything you ever wanted to know about the program. Um, there'll be two presenters today, uh, myself and my colleague uh, Isabel uh, Morenci. Um, I'm the founder of the Carry Ethernet Academy and one of the uh, the architects behind the uh, the MEF's uh, Carry Ethernet Certified Professional Program. Uh, I founded the Carry Ethernet Academy uh, in 2007 with the idea that there was a, a a need for more formal education on on Carry Ethernet and the work of the Metro Ethernet Forum than uh, could be gotten just by going to conferences and trade shows or or attending uh, MEF uh, meetings. Uh, I, um, so I've been uh, teaching and working with the MEF for, for uh, very uh, diligently for the past five years. I've been uh, I've uh, also served uh, at the MEF in a variety of different uh, capacities uh, for several different uh, member companies. I've I've served ten terms on the MEF uh, board of directors and was one of the you know the original people to to, to create it. Uh, my colleague Isabel who's currently got a student emergency, so she's helping somebody prepare to actually uh, take the exam later this morning and will be joining us for a few minutes, is also a long-time uh, uh, MEF uh, um, uh, contributor. Uh, in fact, she's one of the most prolific editors at the MEF, having uh, having written six of the abstract test weeks when she was uh, working with IOmetrics, the, uh, the MEF's authorized test lab. So she'll be joining us a little bit later. So the program today is a three-part overview. Uh, essentially, we'll, we'll look at the Carry Ethernet Certified Professional Program uh, in detail. What you know, how it relates to the MEF's other certification programs. We'll look at the exam. Uh, give you, you know, uh, give you a sample question to to ponder, uh, and then uh, at, at the end of the uh, of the lecture to or the presentation today, I'll, I'll give you all an, an opportunity to take a pre-exam assessment and get guidance counseling from the Carrier Ethernet Academy. The second part will look at different ways that you can prepare, um, study and prepare to take the uh, uh, the exam, and then the last part will will uh, I'll give you a little bit of insight on how we work here at the Carrier Ethernet. Uh, Academy with our uh, CECP boot camp uh, program, and invite you all to uh, to consider taking advantage of uh, of that as you uh, as you continue to prepare for the uh, MEF CECP. So the uh, the MEF uh, um, has really had uh, success all around the world with its uh, certification program. So started in two thousand and four with the MEF nine, um, you, you know certification program for Ethernet service at the uni for equipment vendors. Uh, that led to uh, MEF 14, which was a performance and traffic management uh, certification, again designed for equipment vendors. Uh, and then a, shortly thereafter, those two programs were, were made available for service providers. So service providers who were offering carrier Ethernet services over uh, certified uh, equipment that had already been through the MEF certification program could also uh, go for that. Go for that certification. So the MEF CECP program was added to recognize professionals who have demonstrated professional knowledge and prof and possess the expertise to succeed and contribute to their company's success in the carrier Ethernet uh, uh, industry. And and I mentioned that I founded the the uh, Carrier Ethernet Academy in 2007, and it was in recognition that um, you know of the uh, at that time about 150 member companies. Only a handful of individuals from those member companies were able to contribute or, and to participate in MEF meetings. Uh, similarly, uh, when companies went to get uh, go to get certified at the MEF's uh, uh, test lab, uh, typically only a handful of, of the of, of the um, people inside of a particular company that's seeking uh, equipment or services certification work with the IOmetrics, the test lab, and really understand the specifications and um, have, have an opportunity to learn how Carrier Ethernet and the MEF work. So this, the MEF's professional certification program uh, was designed to fill that, uh, to fill that gap really, to uh, um, provide formal education and, and allow a much broader population of the individuals at a, at a, um, a company, either a service provider, uh, a, a, an equipment vendor, or an enterprise buyer of Ethernet services to understand what's going on in the, in, you know, in the, in the MEF and with, and with Carrier Ethernet. 
So th some of the benefits of CECP certification from uh, for the service provider and the vendors who leverage the program is it it really increases the productivity. So so for the companies that send their people. Uh, you know, um, through the MEF CECP certification program, it directly increases productivity and the effectiveness of the staff working to sell, market, promote, deploy, and support carry Ethernet services. So now it's not just the two or three individuals that uh, that are able to participate at the MEF or the two or three individuals that were able to uh, participate in the certification program with and work with IOmetrics, but now it's a broad set of the uh, of the pre-sales and marketing uh, individuals. It's also a, a broad set of the people that are in uh, customer service and support um, who, who now understand the precisely defined um, MEF terms and how carrier ethernet networks are built and, uh, and work. It also improves communication within companies by fostering a common language um, that's not based on any one company's products and, and services. So uh, using that precisely defined, those precisely defined MEF terms can cut down a lot of back and forth between you know, product development people and the sales organization, between the sales organization and, and their customer. So it eliminates a lot of back and forth. And, that, and that, that's really um, what, what what uh, generates that increased productivity and, and, and effectiveness is, is everybody's uh, speaking, you know, using the same uh, precisely defined terms and calling the same, calling something the same thing throughout the throughout the organization. Um, the MEF CECP, as the only in, um, vendor neutral certification program, eliminates a lot of time learning uh, third party equipment and details. So um, prior to the MEF CECP, if you wanted a telecom cert, you would probably get one from uh, one of the uh, uh, leading equipment vendors, uh, you know, out there. But if you're not, um, you know, using that equipment's networks in your in your shop, you end up learning a lot of uh, of, of, of terminology and, and processes and configuration and com command line interface that's uh, pertinent for that equipment. But it may not be pertinent for the for the equipment that you're using in uh, in your uh, in your network. Uh, the last thing it does is it creates an identified talent pool of knowledge professionals. So, you know, when your company goes to look to build to build its uh, carrier Ethernet uh, expertise and and to to expand uh, the staff, you know, being able to uh, to to recruit uh, based of, you know individuals who have already gone through the CECP program will uh, guarantee that you're bringing you know professionals in who are knowledgeable and, and have carrier Ethernet subject matter expertise. Uh, the benefits to the individual um, who earned the certification are, you know, are, are also uh, are numerous. It demonstrates domain knowledge and a solid foundation in Care Ethernet. It recognizes uh, the commitment of the uh, uh, of the students who uh, who attempt to, uh, you know who, who who prepare for and and take the exam to master the concepts and pass the exam. It differentiates candidates who have obtained the credential from those who have not. So again, uh, when two individuals are going for the same uh, um, job in the carrier Ethernet industry, one has the certain ones not that, that should give them a, a leg up. And certification programs have been proven through a number of studies to lead to higher salary levels and career advancement, just like it, you know, just like advanced edu continuing education uh, does. So the um, the uh, the the CECP was developed for technical professionals, and you can see this pie chart. Um, it's a little bit dated. Um, but it, ba it basically it has a, a good breakdown um, of the type of uh, individuals who are seeking out the certification. So technical sales and marketing, which is is absolutely the fastest growing seg segment. Um, uh, I, I would say that 60 to 70 percent of the people that come through the Carrie Ethernet Academy's boot camp on a week in week out basis are are these these sort of professionals, people that are uh, you know in in the field working with customers to uh, uh, to, to market and sell uh, services and they're competing against other companies that are selling uh, Ethernet services or trying to sell equipment to, uh, to service providers to deliver those services. Um, the network engineering, network operation, product managers, test service and support uh, individuals. So it, 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 it absolutely is a technical uh, certification and the exam as we'll see in a minute when we, we drill down on that is, is very rigorous from a technical standpoint. Uh, MEM membership is not required in order to obtain the CECP. So, uh, if some of you who are on the call today, companies have not joined the MEF, you you can still uh, uh, register to take uh, the the exam without having to uh, to belong to a to a member company. 
Um, at last count, there were or, or over 800 uh, MEFC ECPs from 160 companies uh, in 48 countries around the world. I think the number uh, I pulled the the number from the uh, from our the, the MEFs dashboard uh, the other day, and I think it's 885 actually. So we're we're easing up. We're you know we're sneaking up on our, our thousand uh, CECPs, and there's been nearly 1,500 uh, CECP exams. Uh, given so the, the the pass rate it's definitely not a hundred percent pass rate for the uh, for those that uh, attempt the uh, the exam so the the distribution is um, about um, you know thirty to forty percent are equipment vendors and 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 as you can see with this uh, chart sixty two percent are now service providers so the service providers and typically being larger companies with with a larger technical sales force those are the those are the folks that are uh, are uh, are taking advantage of this of this uh, program and, and making it part of their uh, career development and, and formal education program inside of their own company. So the the total uh, as of the end of uh, May was 854 uh, service pro or CECPs total around the world. Uh, the average pass rate I mentioned it's not 100 percent, so it's a, it is a it is a, um, a very rigorous technical examination to pass the uh, CECP, and the average pass rate uh, over the years. And, and I couldn't find a, a new version of this particular chart, so it goes back to the end of last year. Was about 65 uh, uh, percent overall, uh, quarter in quarter out. So the the blue lines are those that passed and the, and the greens are the, are, are, are the uh, uh, examinees who would need it to schedule a, a retake. They didn't, uh, they didn't pass it. The reason for the initial spike was when we were, when we first wrote the, uh, MEF first wrote the exam, they gave it to all of the, you know, people that normally attend MEF meetings. So you had essentially a bunch of MEF subject matter experts taking the exam initially. And that was why the 80% uh, pass rate, the, uh, the first, uh, the first go round. So let's take a, a more detailed look at the uh, exam itself. It's a rigorous 80-question exam. Uh, the examinees are given an hour and 45 minutes uh, to complete the uh, the exam. Uh, any of you that are are are, come, are uh, attending today's webinar from non-English um, speaking countries, the exam it, it, uh, today is only available in English. But the MEF does offer uh, an accommodation for uh, for people that have that speak English as a second language. Uh, it's an online exam made up of multiple choice questions that cover ten subject areas, uh, and the ten areas are, are listed here. The exam is is biased towards the carry Thinet service definitions. Uh, the uni, ENI, EVC, and service attributes, applications for carrier Ethernet, comparing and contrasting carrier Ethernet service with other uh, layer two and layer three telecommunication services, and then and and then basically there are a number of other topics: how to transport and, and provide uh, and use access technologies to deliver uh, carrier Ethernet circuit emulation over Ethernet and, and uh, service OEM. Uh, candidates must achieve a 63% or higher to, uh, uh, to, to pass the uh, exam. And so um, the, to translate that for you, that's 54 out of the 80 questions uh, are answered, uh, answered correctly. So let me give you an example of what a, a, a question might look like on the, on the exam. So here's one from the, uh, the carry Ethernet, uh, the component section uh, that, they, that they call it. A customer with three locations requests Ethernet service for very transparent connectivity between the locations, which service best meets the requirement. And here, uh, you're get, you know, the, the uh, customer with three locations would give you an indication that you needed a multi-point service. Unfortunately, the, all four answers that you're presented with are, are multi-point service. So then you have to drill a little bit deeper and see that the other requirement for very transparent connectivity <clears throat> would lead us to a single Ethernet private LAN. The private LAN, uh, the LAN being providing multi-point um, mesh connectivity between all of the unis that are associated with the multi-point to multi-point uh, EVC and because it's a private LAN the, the service the subscriber has the uh, capability to uh, to pass uh, layer two control protocols to the EVC and the service provider is uh, is precluded from modifying any of the uh, the customer CEV LAN ID or class of service information contained in the in the, in the packet header so you can see that th this is ver very typical of a, a large block of the uh, questions on the exam that would that you know so you would not only have to understand all of the different service definitions and what the capabilities are, but you would have to be able to uh, to take those 
uh, services attributes uh, and, and parameters and, and apply them in a, in a, in a real-world uh, application scenario like this one that we were given on this example question. Once you finish the, uh, the, the, the exam, the MEF sends a post-exam assessment um, to each of the candidates. Uh, and, uh, you know, and obviously there's a lot of red ink on this one, so this, uh, this examinee would have, would have needed to schedule a retake. And I don't use this as an example to show how hard the exam is, although I, mentioned, I, I, you know, I can't state enough that it is a very rigorous uh, exam. The reason I picked this um, chart to show is it was, uh, it, it's, um, the, the, the examinee did very well on the access and transport uh, subject areas of the, uh, of the exam. So this indicates to me that this is a um, somebody that works in our, uh, you know, in, in, in the field of, uh, of telecom, and they knew a lot, they, they knew quite a bit about access and, and transport technology. So this is, you know, how do you um, deliver Ethernet in the access network and what kind of transport technologies, things like MPLS or, or Sonnet or, uh, or OTN could be used to deliver carrier Ethernet services. But when it got to the specific MEF components, uh, service OAM, circuit emulation over Ethernet, applications and the fundamentals, comparing Ethernet to layer two, layer three, uh, and the applications they, they, you know, and the attributes, they, did, they really didn't know, know. So they didn't spend enough time really becoming familiar with, with carrier Ethernet uh, in order to, uh, to demonstrate mastery of, the, of, the, of those 10 subject areas and, and pass the exam. So let's look at a couple of, of, of ways that you can go about preparing for the uh, exam. There's uh, there's essentially three blocks. There's self-study. There's some online ebooks and computer-based training, and then there's the, the you know the always the the gold standard. I mean, the reason why we go through um, high you know elementary school, high school, and college uh, typically in an instructor environment is because an instructor can provide you know v valuable aid towards the uh, you know in the best education. So the the uh, self study tools the, the MEF has actually developed a uh, um, you know a, a study guide. They have a listing to all techni forty technical specifications in the twenty white papers, and um, and certainly some students have have just plowed through all of that uh, material and uh, and spent uh, you know a couple hours a day for several months um, preparing for the for the exam and and they're quite proud you know of their accomplishment and 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 they and they uh, and, and they and they should be. Um, the MEF on the go was the MEF's initial uh, compilation, you know, to make, basically make a, a, web, a web app, but it is basically a, a, um, just a compilation of all of the MEF technical specifications in, in one spot, so you can take it on your iPad, um, you know, wherever you want if you don't have uh, uh, web access. Uh, but, but typically these self-study tools lack the guidance and focus and require more time, patience, and, uh, and dedication. Um, there are also a couple of uh, computer-based training and ebooks that are uh, now start, start starting to um, appear. Uh, they provide a little bit more uh, focus. Some of the books do follow the the blueprint of the uh, of the exam and just aren't you know aren't pointers to everything that the MEF has ever done. But again, they they lack the guidance and the interaction with, with an expert. You can't ask the uh, you know the the author of a book a question as you're reading it in the uh, uh, you know, in the middle of the night, or you can't ask them to re-explain something that you know, that a uh, concept that you don't seem to be uh, grasping. So the gold standard of uh, preparation, you know, it is and probably will continue to be uh, interactive instruction from an industry subject matter expert. So in, the, in an instructor-led environment, either online or or you know, face-to-face -face in class is 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 the best way to go. And the MEF has recruited a network of accredited training providers. These are MEF. Uh, companies whose courseware was ha has been audited uh, and approved by the MEF, and their performance is monitored and uh, you know ongoing uh, by the Metro Ethernet Forum. The Carrier Ethernet Academy uh, is proud to be one of the um, MEF accredited uh, uh, training uh, providers. So now let's um, move to the third part of the uh, of today's presentation and talk about the the fastest way to become uh, a CECP, and this is by attending uh, the Carrier Ethernet Academy's boot camp. It's an integrated, interactive uh, uh, class. Uh, courseware is, has been de um, uh, put developed based directly on the MEF uh, technical documents and uh, and specifications. So. Uh, we didn't just go and download a bunch of the MEF uh, um, PowerPoint slides uh, and, and bind them together in a book and, and uh, um, give them to a teacher that used to uh, teach uh, 
um, in other industry certifications. These, this, this is um, copyrighted material that's based directly on the specifications. We've altered it so that uh, that the students can assimilate and and process the information in in, a, in an application oriented manner. And it's a, a our unique application oriented approach puts the students in the in the proper mindset to to put their best effort. Um, forward and, and exceed um, succeed on on uh, passing the exam. Uh, the instructor led delivery options include you know on site where we come uh, we'll send an instructor to your location and teach uh, a room full of uh, of you and your colleagues uh, online. We have a, uh, a, a cyber boot camp version where where we it's still instructor led but it's done over the over the course of uh, of several sessions throughout the, uh, the week. Uh, or in class, um, we we offer um, periodic uh, classroom public cl public classes in our network of training locations around the world. So when you look to choose uh, an accredited training provider, um, really what you want to look for is experience with the MEF. So um, how are the are the instructors? Um, instructors like Isabel and I, who have, have been working with the uh, the, the MEF for the past 10 years of, of our career, or are, is the instructor that, uh, that you're going to, uh, to learn from um, you know, just, just a professional trainer that has a new course to teach? Um, and uh, also look at the number of CECPs who have taken uh, the course from, from the ATP. The, uh, the Carrythonet Academy has, uh, you know, approximately out of that 850 CECPs, the Carrythonet Academy has, our graduates are, are about 350 of that total. We have about 40% of the uh, total number of, uh, of CECPs around the world, and that's that, that's much higher uh, here in the uh, in the U.S. where the bulk of the uh, CECPs uh, uh, exist. Also look at the pass rate of, of the students. Our, uh, uh, I'll let Isabel talk a little bit about our um, our, our courseware, but the uh, our, our proven methodology of of lecture combined with in class exercises, uh, practice quiz, um, you know quizzes uh, at the end of each module, and, and then a comprehensive practice exam at the end of the test. Um, we have over a a, um, a ninety, I think it's a nine. Our latest is a ninety two percent pass rate uh, for for students coming through the uh, CECP program. And then you also have to look at the duration and cost of the course. It's not, and it's not just the uh, the the large largest cost isn't the tuition, but it's the time out of the office for the uh, for the individual. So you really want to make sure that after you take the uh, you know that the the, uh, the 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 class is an, is accelerated, so it, it maximizes the time away from the field and and in class, and also that the exam is given you know right then and there. Um, some of the other uh, training programs uh, pr you know, de deliver the uh, the training for a week and then encourage the students to go off for another couple of weeks and then take the uh, take the exam after a, a additional study and uh, uh, and this and this in my opinion defeats the uh, um, the purpose of coming on a, on a course and then look at the delivery options and availability you know training centers on as well as online and uh, and distance learning so as I mentioned all of our instructors are long-standing contributors and carry within that subject matter expertise over 350 of those eight you know of, of those 854 CECPs are graduates of the uh, of the Academy and our first time pass rate is high Higher than 90 percent. Uh, our course duration of three days, so it's a bit, it's a it's an intense uh, course with three days. There there is you know homework and uh, uh, and and what, what you know what I'll call reinforcement reading um, that we ask the students to do in the evening. We give a comprehensive uh, practice exam the, um, the night before. Then on the morning of the fourth day, we give the uh, a quick review and then uh, proctor the exam for. Uh, for the for the students, so it's always instructor led, and we our program is available, you know, as I mentioned, on site, which is, uh, you know, the the way that we're doing most most of our training because it's a new certification and companies have a uh, you know requirement to uh, to send multiple people on the on the program. That's a very cost effective uh, way, and and it gets everybody up to speed at the same time. Uh, we also have the program available online and as well as uh, in our in our public uh, class environment. So now I'll pass the baton to uh, Isabel and she'll tell you a little bit more about the program. Isabel? Good morning, everybody. Uh, before I start, I'd like to take you back in time a little bit. Just think about 
your best class, the one you had either in high school, in college, in university. And remember how you liked your teacher, probably. Uh, instructors are really key um, in, in, in the success of a class. And uh, I think that very, very importantly, uh, instructors of CCP must be people that have experience in the industry and that have gone through this uh, hard certification. Also, the courseware. It's important that not only lectures, but that the courseware can help you uh, solidify and understand better uh, what has been uh, taught to you in the lectures. So our, our class or our courseware is really interactive. Um, as Craig was saying, uh, we have lectures, but we also have uh, in-class exercises where uh, all the attendees can participate and work together and do their own presentation to the other groups of students uh, on the exercises that we've done and practice uh, the content that we've learned that day. Um, in addition to that, we have quizzes and practice exams. Uh, these really help uh, the teacher or the instructor to evaluate where each student is and also to give some additional help to certain students so that we make sure that the whole class can go at the same pace and that nobody is left behind. So it's really all about the courseware and, and the instructor. Uh, another uh, specificity of our class is that not only we, we have developed our own content and simplified all the, the, the very deep technical material of the MEF, but we also allow the, the, the students to go through the MEF specs and walk them through the different sections that are applicable to each of the modules of the class. So instead of having to go through 4D technical specs by yourself, you are guided, uh, you have the, the, the high level information, and then if you need more or more understanding, deeper understanding on certain subjects, you'll know exactly where to look for in the different MEF specs. So um, as, as probably a lot of you know, that MEF services are based on a certain sets of attributes. This is how you create a service. And the main uh, technical specs are MEF 10.2 and 6.1 that we are uh, really going through deeply in the class. Um, these are examples where we walk you through, we walk you through examples, uh, use cases, based really on uh, the technical material in these uh, specifications. Finally, in, in, in the MEF fundamentals, there are not much. It's just that there are a lot of derivatives from them. So if, if you take it from very high level, the MEF has defined two interfaces, the UNI, which is the interface between the subscriber and the service provider, and the ENNI, which is the interface between uh, operators, and two services constructs, the EVC, the Ethernet virtual connection, which is really the end-to-end -end connection from a subscriber point of view, and the OVC, which is the uh, within one operator man, this connection. And all the class is around these uh, four concepts. We, we talk about the interfaces, we really dissect all the services constructs. And in addition to that, we look at what's happening at those interfaces in terms of management, in terms of protection. And this is from an interface point of view and also from an end-to-end -end service point of view. So you really get an overall understanding of what needs to be done uh, from a MEF compliance uh, perspective to, develop, to deploy Ethernet services on any uh, uh, transport technology that you may use in an operator man with any uh, equipment that supports these interfaces at, at uh, the different external interfaces. So the class and the exam, both of them are application oriented because this is really what you need when you go back in your day-to-day -day work and in the field. It's, it's always application-oriented. It's always from a subscriber demand or from another service provider demand. So uh, most of our work and our examples and quizzes are application-oriented. And here you can see one of them, 
Um, this is an example where uh, you have a headquarter, an enterprise with a headquarter and different uh, branch offices uh, where the headquarter needs to be uh, interconnected with all the branch offices and where the branch offices cannot exchange information uh, amongst themselves. Uh, so you need for that different uh, EVP3 services. Um, and in addition to that, you need connection to an internet ISP. So you have multiplexing at the headquarters with two different EVPLs to connect to the ISP. So this is an example of uh, some work and some different services that would dissect in the class and help you understand what type of services and what are the attributes that are required depending on the different um, subscriber requirements or service provider requirements. So here's a little bit more detailed about our uh, bootcamp curriculum that now uh, very importantly includes uh, CE 2.0 material. You probably heard a lot about CE 2.0 certification for equipment vendors, for service providers. CE 2.0 is uh, basically the addition of standardized interconnected services the e-access services. And in addition to that, in C2.0, classes of service are standardized, marking the classes of service, uh, the performance associated with each class of service are standardized as well. Um, and these services are manageable. Not only the, the, the new services, but all these services that have been defined as of now are now manageable with uh, link OAM, service OAM, uh, new means of protection and to then protection are defined. So as you can see here in our curriculum, we start um, uh, by talking about the architecture. You have a little overview here on the past slides with the ENNI, the UNI, the OVC, EVC. So this is really the basic architecture. Then the Ethernet services. MEF 6.1 are all the UNI to UNI services, whereas MEF 33 is one of the spec that is really part of C2.0. It talks about the e-access services. Uh, the OVC services were, were, all the attributes of them were previously defined, but now they are really packaged into real services and they're called e-access services. Um, the internet, uh, the ethernet interfaces, the UNI, the ENNI that you can find in MEF 13, 2026, MEF 23.1 is a spec that came out in C2.0, which is very one of the most important spec developed by the MEF. It's about uh, classes of service, standardized classes of service, standardized performance objectives. Um, also, we uh, in, in, in the curriculum, we talk about circuit emulation services. We all know that circuit emulation services have been there for a while. There's some kind of a transition between uh, the legacy services going all the way to pure Ethernet uh, networks. But uh, we, we, it's, it's important to talk about circuit emulation services uh, in terms of mobile backhaul because uh, it's, it's, it's one way of uh, deploying mobile backhaul. And it also brings us to talk about the different uh, synchronization distribution mechanisms uh, using Ethernet networks. So this is a quite interesting and, and, and deep chapter in terms of uh, mobile backhaul and timing and synchronization. Service OAM and protection mechanisms. You'll see uh, uh, service OAM protection are really based on other standards organizations, standards and recommendation. However, Service OEM has really been adapted with uh, the MEF in terms of fault management, service management, whereas protection mechanisms are really left uh, as defined in, in IEEE and ITUT. Uh, and, and, and to conclude, um, the, the boot camp, we really need, even if the MEF and the definition of services are agnostic to the transport technology and the access technologies, uh, it's very important to, uh, to provide you information and really explain how deploying services on different transport technology can allow you to manage better or to have more subscribers uh, deployed on a network so and also um, access technologies in terms of rate and reach of each access technology um, so this is all covered in in our uh, curriculum uh, you may be asking